A Tokyo pickpocket, Beowulf, and a sibling rivalry set in motion by AIDS. These are some of the themes in the top 10 fiction books as picked by our Wall Street Journal book review team, Robert Messenger. He's the book editor. He is right here beside me. Hi there. Hi. All right. First, we got to get to the nitty gritty. How you guys come up, come up with a list? Because fiction is so eclectic and it's so up to personal opinion. How do you all arrive at your decision for top 10? Well, we first look at the books reviewed this year and we try to pull the books that just stood out in the review. So first we have to choose the books to review, then we go through all the reviews and some books in all the genres, mystery, science fiction, we just, things just sort of pop off the list and you just know, I read that, it was so great, you can't forget it four months later. And then we sit in a room and we argue. And you argue. And these are all books you have reviewed on, at WSJ Absolutely. at some point. Now, Tell the Wolves I'm Home, just give us a feel for that. That's one of the books on the list, very interesting. Uh, the give us a summary of the plot and why you all thought this is so compelling. Uh, Carol Rivka Brunt's novel is just deeply moving. A young girl, 14, June Elba, she lives in Westchester. She's only in her, she feels lonely in her family, and her only friend is her uncle, a painter in Manhattan who's dying of AIDS. He dies, the rest of her family doesn't seem to care at all, and she's bereft. So she does, she goes and befriends his lover, who is also dying of AIDS, and this sets in motion endless hang ringing in the family and discovery that there's intergenerational conflicts, her own troubles with her sister mirror her mother's troubles with her Uncle Finn. Right. And yeah. the book is just brilliantly written. She's 14 years old, but she has this sort of battle-scarred like mentality of an adult, and Brunt just brings it home. The prose just sings, and the story, the family comes together in the end, though it's a very, very dark ending, but it just moves, and you can't really forget what Brunt's achieved with this life. And one of the things that's always so powerful about fiction is when people take characters we've, we've read a lot about, like a Beowulf char character, and they do something new with it, and you say, this happens in this book, Earth and Air. Peter Dickinson has had a very, very long career as a, as a, as a fantasy writer, a mystery writer, a writer for children in the UK. And he's written three books with his wife, sort of reimagining elemental characters, earth, air, fire, water. And here, in these sort of very brief sort of fantasy tales, he sort of takes traditional themes like Beowulf and Athena and turns them on their head. And they are just wondrously inventive. We've all known a fairy tale from a young, an elemental tale. Yeah. And here they are, they're brand new again and just, just charming. And he's just exactly what you want in a fantasy writer. The other one that I'm interested in reading, because of course I'm lucky enough to have gotten a sneak preview of your list here, is this one dealing with the, sort of the, in, the, the, the internal brain of a Tokyo pickpocket. Yeah. The Thief. The Thief is a debut novel by, by a Japanese mystery novel. He's written one more in Japanese. This is his first in English. It is, it is Dostoevsky. There's no real way around it. This pickpocket describes his crimes intricately, the sweat that pours down his back, the fear as he goes and steals a man's wallet, and then he himself is swept up in an evil plot by a sort of malign genius. I mean, he is, it's a Raskolnikov quite character. It's wow. just an amazing and riveting debut novel. I do not envy you guys having to narrow this list down to 10 books. I hope you're all still speaking in the book review department. It is. We're just lucky. <laughs> we get to tout these great books, and it's yeah. all done. I mean, we, every year we get to see these wonderful books, and it's just a joy to be able to say to people, these are these are books you should read. All right. Well, there are 10 books they say you should read. You're looking at the list of them all right now, and you can read more about those on WSJ.com. Thanks for being with us. Those are the best fiction books of 2012, according to the Wall Street Journal Book Review team.